morning. Very, very good to see you. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you. Oh, but I feel not very happy this Easter uh, concerning this story. Um, the tone, I think, in the press this morning is that we're looking at the possibility of Ukrainian defeat and, frustratingly, possibly a defeat that, even at this stage, Western allies could avoid. What do you think? Yes, I think, um, first of all, retreat and defeat. That is on the cards. I um, don't want to be over self-regarding, but I wrote that. that. We are facing setback, but we are facing the very possibility, if the combination of things go right for Russia, stand off bombs, attacking Odessa, as well as on the front, and a huge build-up of numbers, of munitions and personnel. 1.3 million in reserve or, or, altogether. Whether that defeat is tactical, temporary or catastrophic. Either way, and this is what Donald, Donald Tusk was warning, it is very, very bad news for Europe. And the trouble is, with warning Europe about the real danger, which includes the, the area in which Britain sits, that if you really warn too early, People will be put off. They say you're frightening the horses. And if you do it too late, it will be too late. And we're in a very, very dangerous position. And what Donald Tusk was saying is that the European allies, particularly through NATO and the EU, have not got their act together. Ukraine is running out of ammunition. That's yeah. a simple point. Uh, on, on, on the one hand, we have the problem in the United States where the arms uh, um, supply is blocked in Congress. And then we have the issue of whether uh, Donald Trump will be become president. But in Europe, our procurement systems are failing. Talk to me about that. Absolutely hopeless. They've talked about it for years and years and years. I think very likely when you were defence secretary, that we're going to coordinate that the European entity, whether it was the EC or the EU, would get this aspect together. By the way, I think we have to say to Europe, Britain is very much involved in defence, but the European Union framework for defence and security, it plays second. You've got to work through NATO and you've got to get it together. But it is it's very reminiscent of things we saw in the last century where ammunition stocks run out. The, the lack of ammunition, particularly artillery am, ammunition, is absolutely the symptom of the crisis. And we've got to work out at different stages, UK, how we work with allies, how we're going to deal with reforming our own system in defence. It's a very big ask that will happen to the new government that comes in after the election. There will have to be a defence review and it must revolve around three or four very simple principles. Uh, I, was, I was indeed immensely frustrated by the procurement system when I was in office and also, as you can imagine, very insistent that NATO had to be the primary organisation for collective defence. Uh, Colonel Richard Kemp, who's formerly an officer in the British Army, uh, can join us now. Um, Richard, do you take the view that at this stage, the Europeans, if they got that act together, could make a material difference to the defence of Ukraine? I think they certainly could, but it's, it's probably too late for that. I think it's, it's possible that something significant could be done, but, but I think uh, that we've had over two years now of of un, uh, insufficient support for Ukraine from the US and, of course, from the uh, from Europe as well, and that's put Ukraine in the position it's in today. I think it's going it, to, you know, you, you, Russia has been on the on the offensive to a limited extent anyway for a number of months now, and there's not really a hell of a lot stopping them for from continuing with that. And I think sh unless we're able to get significant amounts of particularly artillery, tank ammunition, long-range missiles, and, of course, aircraft to Ukraine, they're not, it's, we're not going to turn the situation around now, I'm afraid. Um, Richard, a thought that I heard expressed this morning, which struck me like a thunderbolt, is that if Russia were to take over Ukraine, it gains the armaments of Ukraine and the 800,000 who are enlisted in the Ukrainian forces, which puts it in a much stronger position to um, initiate its next offensive. Yeah, I, I think that's that's obviously a, a, a real danger. I'm not sure it's very likely to happen. I suspect that um, Putin won't go full blast out to to uh, take over the whole of Ukraine. I think he'll probably uh, be more willing to to take to keep what he's got and maybe expand the territory further and come to some kind of a uh, an agreement, peace, some kind of peace agreement, probably forced upon Ukraine by the Americans. I think that's a more likely outcome. But you're of course right that. 
if he does go full blast into uh, into Ukraine and take over the whole country, then he's got a hell of a lot more power than he already has now, potentially. Um, thank you, Richard. Let me let me ask Robert. Um, which are the places that we should be worried about? Moldova, Poland, the Baltic states? Yes, and the Arctic. And the, but the problem is that we have seen uh, activity off the program uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean. They've taken over Benghazi. They've got two ports there. They're moving into Africa because they are now part of the axis of disruption. And the new factor in this, that Putin is absolutely clear, the solid allies for supply, and it will continue, are North Korea and Iran. Donald Tusk's point, as you know, is that it's not going to stop here. This is what the bolts, the three Baltic countries are advising us. And there is this alliance, and they look very much to Britain, curiously, of Poland, and then the joint expeditionary force, who are the Nordics. Now, Finland, Poland, Norway, what have they got in common? They have got a border with Russia, and they're very worried about it. But it's very interesting. We show pictures of ground forces. It, in the next few months, as one of the senior advisers to the MOD, Dr. Rob Johnson, was pointing out in a talk uh, the, uh, la last week, a lot is going to happen in the air and on the sea. And on the sea, in keeping Odessa open, it's where Britain and Britain's advice, which has been actually very strong and very practical uh, uh, up to now, is absolutely critical. It, you, you imply, of course, a, a new division in Europe, which is b between those who have a border with Russia or are very close to Russia, who have sort of, as it were, got it, and the rest of us who kind of haven't got it. Uh, thank you very much indeed.